In this video, we're going to take a look at using some Voronoi diagrams in computer graphics. So here's a couple examples of a few things I've made using these diagrams. And you can see that the uh, basic uh, shapes are all provided by this, uh, this one pattern. These were discovered by Georgi Voronoi, who was a Ukrainian mathematician. And he studied under Andrei Markov at St. Petersburg University. So these diagrams have applications in a variety of fields, health, engineering, computer science, and actually baking. I'm going to go into Blender, which is a free, open source, 3D modeling and animation program. In the center of each of these polygons is a seed point. Uh, and those are generated here in our texture by this randomness. So if we change that to zero, you'll see that then now all of the points are equidistant from each other. Uh, and it generates squares, but the randomness then sort of moves them around in such a way that uh, they're not equidistant from each other. Uh, then this F1 function here is what actually is going to evaluate uh, the, uh, uh, the sort of space around it, measuring the, using this distance metric here, uh, all of the points around it. Any of the points that are then sort of closest to that seed point are assigned this color uh, for that particular seed point. The borders between the two different polygons are generated for uh, points that are equidistant from each of these seed points here. And then the points where you have uh, multiple lines converging at a vertex, that means that that point is equidistant from three, po three of the seed points. Um, you have different functions that will generate uh, slightly different patterns. So the F2 function, as you can see, has a different evaluation, gives you different polygons. And then the smooth F1 is the same uh, F1 function here, but then it sort of blurs out uh, the, the distances. So instead of having hard edges, you have that sort of blurry pattern. Okay, so now we've got all that, we need to talk about distance metrics. So there's different ways to measure distance. The Euclidean method is sort of the way you're used to. It uh, uses the Pythagorean theorem. And so you're just uh, calculating the hypotenuse there, that right triangle. Okay, then we have the Manhattan distance. And this, you can think about driving around a city. You can't drive diagonally through a city block. So this is taking both the uh, X and Y uh, distances and putting them together. So then we have the Chebyshev distance, and this is the maximum on either the X or Y direction. And so this is actually, when you use the discrete model, uh, makes diagonal movement the same cost as horizontal or vertical movement on the grid. This is the way that you move miniatures in Dungeons and Dragons. And the last one that we have access to in Blender is the Minkowski metric. So it is actually a generalization of the other three. So you can see in the formula there that we've got these exponents where you've got a p and then a 1 over p. So we can manipulate that down here in the, uh, uh, the shader nodes. And so if we set that to 0, then nothing's happening, so we just get the default grid. If we set this to 1, we're going to get the uh, Manhattan distance. We set it to 2, we're going to get the Euclidean distance. And then if we go above two, we start to approach the Chebyshev distance. So technically, we have to take the limit as uh, p goes to infinity, but uh, the computer doesn't understand infinity, so 32 is going to suffice here in the computer. Now, I'll usually use uh, a fractional exponent on the Minkowski because it makes that sort of shattered look there. So those are our distance metrics that we can use. Those are just going to give us different shapes to our Voronoi diagram. Okay, let's look at some applications. So these are a few things I've made uh, over the years using Voronoi diagrams as sort of the basis of the pattern. Here we have a sort of flagstone street, cobblestone street, or uh, you might be able to use that as like a natural stone wall. So this is just two Voronoi textures, uh, one using the F1 and the other using the F1 smooth. And so I've got those going into a pair of color ramps right there and that's pulling out the uh, the actual color and making it that grayscale and then mixing it back together so you get the variation of the different rocks having different different shades of, of uh, different shades of gray uh, we're also using the distance information and so I'm dividing the uh, f1 by the f1 smooth 
and that's giving us that sort of sharp edge or that sort of sharp flat top and so you can see as I manipulate the power here I can manipulate the strength of sort of the creases in between the rocks and then we've got all of this is going into uh, this bump node here and setting the height on these bumps and that goes into the uh, the normal input on our plane so it's manipulating the normal vectors on our plane to make it seem like there's a three-dimensional geometry there but there really isn't it really is just a flat plane Boom. okay now let's put a light over top of this and uh, you can see pretty dramatically what happens as we move the light around it behaves as if there is a three-dimensional surface there but there really isn't it's really just that flat plane and so that's just manipulating those normal vectors and I'm going to do a whole video all about that technique and stuff you can do with that but for now let's just take a look and you can just see that this at its most basic is just a Voronoi all right on to the next one this is a star uh, material that I made very simply using a Musgrave texture and a Voronoi texture Musgrave is uh, providing the yellow swirliness the uh, Voronoi is providing the variation in the sunspots so you can see that's uh, what's driving that Okay, so for this next one, uh, it's this cartoon water shader that I made. It uses uh, two Voronois. It's again using the F1 and F1 Smooth, and we're subtracting them this time and then sending them into a color ramp so that we can get this sort of nice foamy effect on the top of the water there. Uh, we're using a four-dimensional version this time, and that's so that I can animate the W input. So if you think about a normal three-dimensional space, you got X, Y, and Z. With our four-dimensional version, we have a W uh, as well, and by changing that value over time, we can actually make the uh, the shapes change. So if you watch the uh, little green box on the left, and then the pattern in the water, those are both changing, and that's how that's working. So once again, this is just at its heart, just a Voronoi. So let's look at the color. We'll unplug this, and we'll just throw that in there. And yep, there's our pattern once again. Okay, so not only can we just manipulate the, uh, the shader on an object, we can actually manipulate the geometry using the Voronoi. So this is a geometry node setup, and I've got a few nodes here that I am driving with the Voronoi texture. And so ultimately this is actually just a plane that I'm then doing some stuff to the points that uh, exist on that plane. And so the first node here actually uh, is an extrude node. So it is taking the points on the plane and extruding them up to a height that is set by the distance uh, data coming out of that Voronoi. So that's all just done with that. And it gives sort of a nice pseudo random pattern uh, that's going to be useful for us in a minute. So the next one uh, takes those points and just turns them into a point cloud, sort of disassociates them from the uh, from the plane, and we're going to then make that into a new mesh, smooth that over, and throw a texture on it. So that's what the last three uh, nodes do. Then by just manipulating the seed that's plugged into that W value, again we're using a four-dimensional Voronoi, and so we're just manipulating that W value to get a bunch of different uh, rocks in this procedural rock generator. The, uh, the rock texture, that sort of pebbly texture, is actually driven by four more Voronoi nodes. And they're just sort of offset to each other, have some color ramps on them, and that gives it that sort of pebbly texture. So that makes us a nice little procedural rock generator. Throw a bunch of them together and you get a little asteroid field. Okay, so the last example we're going to do here is a uh, procedural city generator that I've made. And so these nodes in the middle here are setting up which uh, buildings get which textures. But the height and sort of the shape of the city blocks is all being driven by this Voronoi. 
and I'm using the distance to edge function rather than uh, one of the other solvers that we used before. I've just found that this works really well for this particular situation. But uh, we can take a look and see what it's going to look like if uh, we switch this over to the F1. It will work, uh, it just isn't quite as clean. So if we go up F1, and then we can check some of these different uh, distance metrics. So here we are on Chebyshev, Euclidean, very tall buildings there, Manhattan, they get even taller, thicker. And then the Chevy Chev again gives us sort of rectangular L-shaped buildings, a lot of those. But that distance to edge gives us a nice, uh, what I think is a nice scale for, for what I'm doing here. So if we just scroll through, get this going, throw a little smog on there, and that looks like a pretty good little procedural city. If you're interested in learning more about Blender, I have a YouTube channel where I do tutorials for beginners. Uh, so head on over there, there's a link in the description. Okay, and that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.